Okay, I will introduce, uh, starting from our left, uh, Sylvia Moore. It's organizer at AWS uh, and developer at Typeform. So welcome, Sylvia. <laughs> She was talking about Meteor, but uh, as Meteor is uh, a little bit outside this debate, okay, because it's, as you all know, it's a frame, it actually is a platform, actually, okay? It's not, they, they are not naming itself as a framework, but as a, as a platform. Uh, it can work with Angular and React as well, okay, for doing the backend and the frontend at the same time, okay? but. Actually, she has worked with, um, with Angular, and in uh, Typeform, she is working with React and Redux, so she's a very experienced person for this debate, okay? Um, so, next one is Raul Jimenez, is a Google developer expert and CEO of By Default, okay? Uh, she will be uh, speaking uh, about, she will be, uh, he will be defending, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> he will be defending <laughs> Angular. Um, uh, and that's it. Uh, the next one is Philip Desmet. I know it correctly. First and last. <laughs> <laughs> he will be defending. He will be defending Amber. Yes. And he, he's uh, the CTO of Intuo, which is a platform for uh, HR teams. Yeah. If I'm correct. Yeah. Uh, and the last one is Caramon. Uh, he's uh, the CTO of Factorial. Uh, it's a startup from here, unique. And. It's also HR. Like, HR, yeah. <laughs> we're not competitors. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're switching to uh, uh, HR platforms. Yeah. Okay, so. The next one is going to be HR debates. <laughs> <laughs> and he will be defending uh, React.js. Yes. So, okay, welcome everybody. So, first of all, we are going to um, start with a round. Uh, we are going reverse way, I think, now. And you have a maximum of five minutes. I think five minutes is too long, actually. So don't worry if you do not feel that. But I will stop you at, at five minutes. Uh, to explain about, to talk about the pros and cons of the, of the framework that they are defending and why you, uh, you choose them. Okay, that's, uh, that's fair. So as I said, I'm Pau, and uh, my experience with front-end development uh, comes from uh, the very beginning with jQuery, then I jumped into the wagon of Backbone, and actually we did an event in this very room. Uh, it was a framework debate, and I had to defend Backbone, which uh, probably if I see the video right now, it would be a little bit embarrassing, but it's fine. And I guess it it's going to be the same uh, when I see the video about React today, but uh, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I say this as, as a disclaimer. So. Uh, Basically, uh, I was uh, I was CTO before at Redbooth, before starting Factorial, and we had a huge code base with Backbone and, and Marionette, and it was really uh, really painful to deal with uh, with state basically. And when uh, React started to become uh, more prominent, the thing that for me it was more obvious and it was enlightening, it was the uh, unidirectional flow. So basically, the fact that you have to only declare uh, how the views have to render the content, and then you can deal with the content, and then automatically uh, the views uh, get rendered. So this for me was, was amazing. And the fact that it was only state and components, the composability, it was really good. That being said, I'm not going to defend React over the other frameworks. Uh, I think it's quite good that there are many frameworks, so the, all the frameworks learn from each other. Uh, and also compete about each other. But uh, if all of you would use React, it would be amazing, because then I don't have to change framework in four years like happened with Backbone. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's, that's my, my, my second point is when, when starting in Factorial, so obviously we had to, to decide the stack. And it's always the same, like, do I go hipster and I choose something like Vue.js or like Elm or whatever? Uh, or do I want to use something I know? Or, or some, something in between. So uh, looking at all the uh, profiles of what people that I wanted to hire or you know, like more or less about the community, I, I decided uh, that React had the most uh, or like the biggest uh, uh, pool of people that wanted to work with it. Uh, and that was one of the decisions that I took. It was to use React because I thought 
and the pool of candidates, if I had to assemble a team for front-end development, would be bigger. So I wouldn't say all the pros and cons have to be on the technical side. I actually think uh, all the frameworks exposed today, none of them give you a competitive advantage. Like, oh, if you use Angular or Ember or React, you're going to be like 10x. Uh, so in, in this sense, I decided more about React because it was the most popular at the moment. Okay. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, Philip, uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, Ember and pros and cons? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I really like what Pau said, by the way. Um, Thank you. Because I was just 10 minutes ago. You're not going to fight. <laughs> You're going to start drinking beer. <laughs> That's a good idea, actually. <laughs> 10 minutes ago, I was just talking to a friend, and he said, I really hope this doesn't turn into like a front-end flame war. So I, I was like, well, let's see. Um, but I brought my um, list of notes of the pros of Ember. Um, but first, I think if you talk about, let's say, the big three, Angular, React, Ember, we're like the ugly little brother, maybe. Because um, no one really likes to use Ember if you talk to them. Like, a lot of people don't even or haven't even looked into Ember, and it, I think that's quite a shame. Uh, because even though it might not be that popular, it's backed by a lot of great companies, especially in the US. Um, so if you look at Yahoo, LinkedIn, they use Ember a lot. Um, in fact, if you right now go to the mobile side of LinkedIn, it's completely written in Ember. Um, all these nice and quirky um, animations there in Ember. Um, something that people probably don't know is also Apple Music. Apple Music apparently completely written in Ember. Um, even though it's a desktop app, it's probably a wrapper around an Ember app. So I thought that was pretty cool. So even though it's not a big household name, such as Facebook and um, uh, what's it, Google? Um, yeah, Ember has decent backing by companies, and I think that should not be um, forgotten. So next time you open up Twitch, for instance, are there gamers here? If there are, um, Twitch is completely written in Ember as well. Um, anyway, I'm going to shut up about the companies using Ember now and going into the real um, pros. We use Ember as well, by the way. Cool, yeah. yeah, and we're hiring. Um, but I think the biggest pro for me in Ember is um, a concept people call in the industry um, convention over configuration. Uh, I compare Ember a lot to Rails in the sense that um, it just works out of the box. Um, it comes with build tools, it comes with HTTP mocking, it comes with a development server. It's got everything you need, basically. You're up and running in a day, a few days, maybe. Um, in comparison to maybe something like React, um, you have to choose your own whole stack, like front-end stack, then I mean you have to choose Redux. Uh, you can plug it into an existing um, application, fair enough, but then you have to use Redux, uh, Redux I, or whatever you want to use, um, which is also very powerful, but I don't think uh, these, let's say, architectural uh, decisions should be left up to, um, to people wanting to use a framework. But that's like obviously everything that's going to be said here tonight is an opinion, and that's my opinion um, around that. Another really strong point, I think, um, with Ember are the releases and the release cycle. So every six weeks, Ember does a release. Um, so whether or not there have been big, big improvements, after six weeks, it goes up into a minor version. So they use semantic versioning. So now we're at 10.10. Uh, 2.10, sorry. In six weeks, we're going to 2.11. Whether or not there have been significant features built or, or whatever, it's just going to be that. Next to that, um, they also do LTS releases. So if you're familiar with Unix, like Ubuntu, Linux, um, they do that a lot. So um, LTS means long-term support, by the way. So if you use um, Ember 2.8 right now it is, they will still release security updates for another, I think, 18 months it is. So you, there's no JavaScript fatigue as in the sense that you don't have to upgrade if you don't want to. And they, they, the Ember core team really thinks of it as a long-term project. And it's really open source. They really work together. Um, they publish RFCs, like you know, requests. If, if someone wants to build a new feature, they really discuss this as a team. Where I think, if you look at React or Angular, it's more driven from a company point of view, from Facebook. If Facebook yeah, says, yeah. we need to build this and we need to change it, it's going to be changed. Yeah, actually, actually, in these front-end frameworks, the, the exception is Ember. Um, I mean, and, and the front end part, because uh, we were talking uh, before about it, but we are almost discussing about Google or Facebook. 
Yeah, because it, one is uh, Facebook driver, the other is Google. Oh, Yehuda. No? <laughs> well, yeah. It's like, it's backed by a company, actually, but it's not Facebook or Google. In fact, Ember uh, was a hard fork of um, Sprout Core, and Sprout Core was yeah. developed by Apple in-house as a front-end framework, but that's like really? six I years ago, like yeah. when they forked. Uh, but still, I, like, there's not really a driving force, let's say, behind uh, behind Ember as a framework. So I think that's actually a pro. Uh, but yeah, I've got some other things, but yeah, yeah we, these are the most important yeah. ones. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm realizing we're not talking about the the cons. We're just uh, saying the good things about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, but I have questions for this. Okay. After this. <laughs> I, okay, this is not an interview. I want you to throw like. Bad things against the other bad. Let's, let's, let's give some space now. Okay, so Raul, uh, can you talk to us about Angular and okay, that word? Yeah. Well, I've been using Angular for the last, I don't know, five years, something like that. So I have a lot of experience with Angular. Um, before that, <laughs> uh, I was an action script developer, so I worked with Flash, yeah with Flash, you know? <laughs> Actually, that was a good thing at that time because the good thing about Flash is that they use ECMAScript and it was, uh, I worked with Flash for, pff, I don't know, 10, 12 years, I don't know, a lot of time. And the good thing is that I really, really, really had a good understanding about all the prototype and how ECMAScript works under, under below, you know? And when, when Flash, you know, just was deprecated, because that was, was, was it, it was that. It was deprecated. Um, I started looking to a new framework. And back in that time, it was Ember. It was Ember 1.3, 1, 1 something like that. It was also um, Backbone, back in that time too. And it was the early versions of Angular. And I really, uh, I, I've done, you know, this pet project with three frameworks. And back in the time, I just choose Angular because the template room framework was very friendly for me. And it was very familiar for me too, uh, for my background in Flash, and because I worked also with Flex. So I said, okay, I can maybe do something like what I've done to create custom elements, custom tags in, in JavaScript. So that was super friendly for me. So I think that this is something that usually happens with developers, you know? When you approach to a new technology, you usually uh, start working with the technology that it's more uh, friendly for you, right? Absolutely. And um, it actually, Right now, Angular evolve, have, has been evolved a lot. Angular 2 is, you know, uh, a big, big uh, step forward. Yeah, it's a big change. I will, it's I a big ask, change. I will ask you about this. It's a big change, yeah, <laughs> obviously. It's a big change, but if you see how the, the framework works, it is basically the same thing. I mean, obviously, you, you can't just port an Angular 1.x application to angular.2.x uh, because it's going to be a pain in the ass. We, we know that thing, that that's obviously. But the good thing is that the knowledge that you have learned on Angular 1, it's completely useful in Angular 2. So that's a very good, very good, good thing. Okay, okay. I, I think, uh, actually, the, the names of, of, of the things on Angular 2 and Angular, uh, and Angular Frog, Angular 1 to Angular 2 have changed a lot? Mm, not that much. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, all the directives, it's uh, basically have the same names. You just, uh, it's just how you write the, but, but, but these things. But, but when you learn, when, when you have learned the, the, how it works, which is super easy because the new template framework, it's super easy to learn. It doesn't have all the drawbacks and all the traps that you that you can find in Angular One. When you learn that thing, that it can you know cost you like uh, one morning studying how the templating framework works, then yeah. it's done. You you can just uh, understand how Angular Two works super easy. And on another hand, uh, another 
thing of, uh, that it's super uh, powerful in Angular 2 that I really like it, it's something that it's being uh, mimicked by the Ember team, actually, which is the Angular CLI. No, no, I like this. I like this. And um, <laughs> I, 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 back in that time, I, I really liked uh, the work that Ember work, uh, have done with the CLI. Now I think that it's super powerful. I really wish that Angular will have right now the Ember CLI because it's awesome. But uh, the Angular CLI, it's uh, improving every day. Every day it's even better. And um, and I think that uh, eventually uh, the Angular CLI is going to be really, really good. As good maybe as, as the Ember CLI. If I'm not mistaken, um, Angular CLI uses Ember CLI under the hood, no? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to play. <laughs> and it's, and yeah, it's, but they, they are migrating. At the same time, Ember CLI is based on Broccoli, which is like yeah, the, yeah, exactly. the pipeline, exactly. but still. That, uh, uh, in any way, I mean, they are, they are moving also to Webpack. Okay. Yeah. So you can use uh, the Broccoli version and the Webpack version. Mm -hmm. I think that right now the Webpack version is kind of more popular. Um, it, I'm using the Webpack version of the Angular CLI. And uh, I think that on the final release, all the broccoli stuff is going to be removed, and they are going to embrace Webpack for the win. <laughs> and, <laughs> and another thing that it's also super powerful in Angular 2, that uh, it's, it's only available in Angular 2, uh, the other frameworks doesn't have this feature, is the I have time compilation. With the I have time compilation, basically, it's going to take all your HTML templates and uh, compile those templates to JavaScript, and then uh, they are going to interpret those JavaScript, uh, those templates in JavaScript, and uh, release a bundle size super minimal. And, uh, it's and point. you answered me before I made you the question. <laughs> <so>. Yeah. <laughs> so. And 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 this and the and the the code that is generated by, by the ahead of time compilation, it's uh, interpreted uh, almost instantly by the virtual machine, by the JavaScript virtual machine. So that makes your app super fast to bootstrap. I mean, we are talking about the, the, an application that uh, has a lot of JavaScript uh, with, uh, uh, I mean, 200 kilobytes of application, 300 kilobytes, 500 yeah. kilobytes that can yeah, start actually, that can start up in in less than a second or one second or yeah, less than two seconds. I, I read uh, that Angular. I thought that Angular and the bundle of Angular and and Rx JS. Yeah. Okay, it's like 800 kilobytes out of the box. Like yeah, but if you use tree shaking and yeah, the ahead of time compilation, you can have that in 25 kilobytes. Well, wow, it's pretty amazing. Okay, so, okay, move on. Uh, Meteor, okay, we understand. It is a little out of this debate, but isn't it actually an interesting point about, uh, we want to hear about Meteor because it's an option that you can start developing all that Angular things or uh, React things. I don't think Ember is included in this bundle because there is documentation for Blaze, Angular, and React. Um, but you can <laughs> use Meteor as a platform to, um, to serve that um, front-end uh, applications and uh, with the same code, actually, because it's uh, it, um, changing the models and that, um, and that stuff. Um, to put all this thing uh, in Meteor, right? So, can you talk? Can you talk a little bit about Meteor? I, I have to. I have to say, whenever I've worked with Meteor, I've always used Blaze. Yeah. I, and okay. um, so, if if you have questions regarding how to use Meteor with React or Angular, okay. I'm going to let you down. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and but I think it's a really good idea that they and the, whoever came up with this idea was very smart. Because Blaze, um, it's, it's very easy to start with Meteor, which is cool. And um, once you get to, once you want to do more complicated things, you right away realize Blaze is a bit limited. So I think um, having the possibility of using React or Angular 2 is really good. Because yeah. if you already have experience with those, and you can, um, 
uh, take advantage of the good things of Meteor, um, you, it's a win-win, I think. Um, having said that, uh, I think uh, the best feature of Meteor is um, the real-time, the data synchronization. Mm. Yeah, because that, it does it on solids, right? Yes. Um, so, and, um, well, that's, that's um, there's one good thing about it and one not so good thing about it is that um, it's out of the box, it's, um, it comes, you can, you work with uh, MongoDB, uh, Mongo databases, but it's, I, I know it's not impossible, but it's super difficult to work with any other type of databases. I think it's even uh, yeah. a bad idea to even try, because it, and also why would you, if it's so easy to use Mongo, right? Because it's Mongo. <laughs> <laughs> if we talk about databases, I always ask people, why would you use Mongo indeed? Because SQL, it just works. Why would you any t use anything other yeah, than that's, SQL? That's unraveling another debate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Okay, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. SQL versus no SQL. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm sorry. <laughs> I prefer serverless. Serverless, <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. Um, also, um, after using Meteor for a while, not so much, actually, but <laughs> I mean, I'm, I have more experience with Angular, I have to say. I, 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 will, I, I will ask you about, about Angular yeah. React right now. But. Um, but I think um, there, there are many good, uh, all good things about Meteor also, that um, it's a platform that allows you to do front-end and back-end both in JavaScript because it's, it's uh, based on Node.js. And so that's, that's good that um, your whole team of developers, they only need to learn, they only need to know JavaScript. But at the same time, <laughs> but at the same time, they are a bit coupled, front-end and yeah. back-end. So it's also not so easy to isolate teams. Like you could have a team working on an API in a very different language, but in this case, it's not it's not so easy. And also from my experience, I think mm, there's really mm, there are really not so many scenarios where I'd recommend using Meteor because if you don't really need uh, real time. If you don't really need your your um, changes being pushed to to the client um, as a necessity, um, it may be uh, a burden to use yeah. Meteor. And um, so the fir first uh, Meteor application that I built was um, a challenge that I. Um, uh, is it, is it side myself? Side, yeah, side, a side project. Yeah, it was a side money. project, but it, it was also depending on a uh, bonus in my previous company, so I was really <laughs> okay, interested yeah, yeah. to... <laughs> yeah. Nice motivation. Yeah, <laughs> but, but also I thought, okay, if I'm going to get a bonus for something, at least let's, let's do something that I really want to do at home yeah. and that I, that I can have fun doing it. So I thought, what's the, what could be the best um, use case for such an application? And I think it's games. Really, it's games. Because you you have you need to have that uh, real time, fast data synchronization. Yeah, yeah. And so it was a sort of board game made uh, web application, which which all, another good thing of Meteor is that um, you can easily create um, uh, um, a smartphone application with the same code base. You can you can build for web, you can build for uh, iOS, and you can build for Android. Uh, it's uh, it's um, integrated with Cordoba, Apache Cordoba. Okay. I I myself didn't get to that uh, phase of my project to to build it for Android, but I made it um, um, responsive, so I could use the web app on the yeah. on the phone. It's fastest. And it was on the first time we used it in my uh, company. We we had this uh, presentation. It was a group of 20 people, and we played the It's a Werewolf game. I don't know if you may know it. It's a board game, actually. You play with cards. And everyone was surprised at how fast it was. And it's for sure. And it's, uh, it was only 20 people in the world playing it at the same time. <laughs> but it's, it's, super, it's super cool. And it didn't take me long. I did it in two weeks. 
and, and I've kept uh, improving it. Yeah, yeah. This is one of the good points of Meteor, I mean, bootstrapping. Mm -hmm. If you need to bootstrap something, it's like, we, if you're doing it with Meteor, you're going, I mean, yeah, blazing fast. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't prepare that. <laughs> no, it's like, you're going so fast. Mm -hmm. uh, but shopping this, but okay. If you, then if you're going, um, um, if you're going in uh, production mode and you have, you need to have a high availability. I think socket are too expensive. Right? Yeah. Well, okay. yeah. There's. I think it used to be a bigger issue in the past. Um, I haven't been using Meteor in the f last few months, and I'm actually not sure what version they are currently in. But I, I know it used to be a big um, issue to um, scale. But nowadays there are some tools like there's one that's very popular that's named Cluster, that allows you to do um, horizontal scaling easily. Okay. By adding, by adding machines, you know, yeah. and and uh, that's not an issue anymore. Um, but oh, it's nice. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. So uh, I think I think that wouldn't be a reason not to try Meteor anymore. If because I I know that was whenever you look on Google, um, most um, most articles of people asking should I use Meteor, they are worried about that. Yeah, That's their it. biggest yeah, worry. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. And explore. also, uh, that's also one one good thing of Meteor. Like when you just start, it's easy to get things done. But when you want to improve performance, you have to really go into detail, uh, tweaking um, uh, the configuration of your collection so that yeah. you don't impact performance. Okay. But but yeah, it's it's okay. it's fun. So I want to ask you about those frameworks that you uh, work with, uh, mm -hmm. Angular, which I, I, I think it's your preferred, yeah. uh, and React, uh, which is the one that you're working with. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, like, it's, like, uh, it's a very good story for you. Yeah. So do you have anything to add uh, on, on, um, on what those guys uh, say uh, about well, Angular or React? Yeah. There are... <laughs> there are what I like Angular, what I like Angular for reasons that I also like React on the opposite side, which is kind okay. of crazy. But yeah, okay. like right. I, I like Angular very much. When I started, with, I started with Angular 1. And it was like I get all I need from Angular alone. And obviously, I can download uh, packages, third party libraries. But with the uh, bare Angular package, I have all I need. I have routing, I have templating, I have... Um, yeah, it's all outside it's, the box. Yeah. It's, it's and and for, for someone that doesn't want to uh, spend so much time um, researching what, which tools I should use, okay. that's, that's great. But then, if you are the kind of person that doesn't want to be so um, tight, and so your hands tied. Yeah, actually, actually, it's like it, it's, I want to choose my own packages. So okay, that's I, also cool for you. I heard about it a lot, but I don't heard about the name opinion, opinionated versus unopinionated. Okay, which is one of the topics that split this debate a lot. It's like um, Angular and Ember are very opinionated. Uh, this means that the framework <laughs> um, tell you uh, how to develop your application. Okay, on, they, they are telling you the way to do it. You, do you want to do routing? This is the way to do it. And React, by the other way, is very unopinionated. And it's like, you want to do routing? Okay, do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, or find something that you want, some library that you want to... to, to so yeah, I, I, I think it's a really valid point, and it's actually... This is why I complain that we only talk about the good things, so I didn't talk about this, for instance. Uh, I think this is more political uh, or philosophical and uh, which is really weird because for instance I'm a Rails guy on the back end I, I, I want the decisions to be made but on the front end I really like to choose my uh, my dishes so I think 
And then, and you, you can find this in any technology, there's always this dichotomy of the people that don't want to make a decision and the people that do want to make a decision. So React aligns more with the Unix philosophy of the right tool for the right job. The only thing is that you spend a lot of time to figuring out which tool is what, but <laughs> that's, the, that's the only thing. So I, I do agree React takes quite a lot of time and the uh, uh, learning curve is really steep because of that. Because you have to assemble your stack. But then uh, the, the good thing, if, if, if there is or if people value it, is that you can actually assemble the right stack. So for instance, uh, when I was uh, starting Factorial, I really wanted uh, to have typing, like incremental typing. Uh, so basically I had two choices, TypeScript and Flow at the moment. So Angular, for, for instance, comes with TypeScript, which I, I think is great. But at the moment, they didn't have new level types. Now they do. And for me, uh, that's, that was uh, something that I really wanted. So I was really grateful that in React, I could choose to use these and so, and so on. So um, I, I, I think it, it depends on the kind of person and who you are and what you want. Um, so for instance, in my opinion, in the back end, I prefer my decisions to be taken. In the front end, I, I want to take my decisions and choose what I like most. Yeah. At the expense of the time. Yeah, of this, this, is, this is mainly a problem from React because. Um, a, pr a problem and, 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 and an advantage. Yeah, no, or, or, or an advantage. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Huh? yeah but, uh, <laughs> but actually, the adoption of React, um, it's, it's, it's very, um, I think, no, it's not low. <laughs> not, not at all. This is not, <laughs> this is not the worst. But it's less than it has to be because of this thing. Because um, some people, some developers want to, some guides to do something. We, we have Dana Vromov, that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the fanboys. Yeah. Yes. No, I, I will. Okay, we will, we will talk about the evangelists later because uh, in React we have Dana Vromov, but in Angular we have. Raúl? Yeah. Really? No. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, no. Uh, in, in Angular, which is which one is the evangelist of Angular? What one is the, the Dana from of, of Angular? Igor Miner or, uh, or Misko Heavery. Yeah, okay. I will, no, but they, they are the creators. They are not. It's a personal choice, but I, I would say John Papa is one of the creators of the design mm. styles of how to do the things on Angular. Yeah, well, like. John, Papa, John Papa created this, this, this uh, um, the, the, the Angular style guide. Yeah. Okay, which, which is pretty similar to what. The, 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 there is something similar in React, for, which is from Airbnb. Yes. Yeah. Which is the Airbnb uh, uh, React style guide. So John Papa wrote something like that, yeah, and yeah. a lot of people following it. Um, I I like that 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 the style guide. I don't follow all the rules, but I think that it's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a good starting point. It's like I mean, uh, for me, it's like. It's not the same, but this is why I'm talking about uh, those guys, Dan Abramov and this guy uh, at, the same t at the same time. Uh, but John Papa hasn't uh, uh, done something like Redux, like Dan Abramov uh, did, and obviously Dan uh, was um, hired by the Facebook uh, React Core team uh, because of obvious reasons. Okay, and, and but it's like I, I put them in the same page because it's the guy that you go to, because Dan Abramov created Redux, but one of the most things you do or you take from Dan Abramov is the, is the style guide and the, and the patterns about the presentational, the, this, this famous article about uh, presentational uh, containers versus, um, no, uh, presentational component versus container components, and blah, blah, blah. it's the same as John Papa. This is why I talk about them together. So it's like kind of a style guide. So yeah, I'm sorry. I, I was uh, talking about. Yeah, yeah I, I would say like in in terms of the choice, I think to wrap up, and maybe you see it differently, but I think on one on one end of the spectrum there's React, where it's a Unix philosophy. You know, like you choose the tools, you assemble, and uh, it's your job to to figure out, which is which is hard, but can be rewarding. I think the uh, the opposite side it's Ember, where actually everything is is chosen for you, so you spend zero time choosing if you want to switch something or change something. I mean, it's like in, 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 in Rails, you know, there's a Rails way, and it's not, I mean, I think it's, 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 it's from Yahoo, there's a... It's the front end on Rails. Yes, I mean, it's exactly, they, exactly. They say it's a Ruby on Rails of front end. And I think Angular, maybe I'm mistaken, because I haven't worked much with it, 
Uh, it's probably something in between because I heard you can switch off the two-way binding, you can use different state management tools, and yeah. so on. So it's a little bit like uh, you get everything included, but you can still, if something you don't like, you can swap it out. Yeah, you you can you can change the the two-way data binding that data binding to one-way data binding. You you can choose that, for example. But it is basically a convention over configuration. Mm -hmm. And um, but it, it opens the door to configuration. Yeah, yeah. You, you can you can tweak a few small things, not not too much, but yeah, you you can uh, tweak a small thing. So yeah. I read it yesterday. I was uh, googling React versus Angular. So uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we were all in the same thread. So. And, and while Ember it chooses everything for you, I've actually read on the internet as well some guys that um, switched Ember data, which is like the data flow library um, for Ember, and they switched it to Redux, actually. Uh, so it's also possible, but I very much prefer my, my um, decisions made to for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I'm not uh, sure. Oh my gosh! No, 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 it's cool, no. <laughs> no, but I'm not sure if this should be part of the debate. But if you ask me, which single page or do you want to build a single page application, or which front end framework should you choose, then I always say, should we use a front end framework? Really? Should you use one? Okay. No, seriously, because <laughs> I know like probably 10% of the people here, they're or maybe more, I don't know. They're developing an app completely on Rails, server rendered HTML, it works completely fine, you're driving the business value, it's going great. And then all of a sudden, there's this crazy developer, your team, he wants to start using React, and I'm like, dude, why? Like, why? And I had the same thing when we started using Ember. Um, I was like, why? Really, I know it, you, your UX will be a lot better. Um, there are a lot of like, pros, but do all applications really need a single page app? If I can interfere. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course. Um, I mean, I have, I have to do that as as possible, okay? So. Okay, that's good, <laughs> because I like, uh, I like the mic. Yeah. <laughs> Let's work as possible. I'm here thinking beer and that's it. So that, that's, that's a really good point, and I, I agree with you, although I've been, uh, for the last six years, I've been doing single web applications, so I failed to resist uh, the temptation. Uh, one, one, like recently when starting a new company and designing the stack, one of the things I also ask myself, it's about mobile development. And I think that's something we, we probably could touch about the, about the frameworks here present. Um, so basically when you start a small company, if you have to decide to hire developers, uh, if you want to go three platforms, which is web, Android, and iOS, uh, it, it can be really, really expensive. So one of the decisions for me to choose React also was like, eventually when we want to launch the, the mobile application, will I be able to use the people that have the skills uh, for building the web application to do the mobile application? Uh, and that was a really big selling point for me. Because having, uh, usually in my experience, iOS and, and Java, uh, like Java Android developers, they are not so willing to change. Uh, so uh, for me, like having a core of, of JavaScript, which was a point about Meteor, about having them on the front end and the back end. So for me, it's like to have the JavaScript developers ruling the front ends, uh, it was really important. So I, I don't know if, uh, how does Ember and Angular deal with mobile, yeah, if, if they do? This is a question I have because now, Okay, I, have, I, I know one of the pros of React, actually it's not React really itself, it's React Native, yeah. which is, uh, we have to know that it's a different thing. Okay, this is the, the first thing we, we, have to, we have to know at first. Uh, React is not the same as React Native, mm -hmm. but they follow the same basis. Okay? So, but it's completely native. Okay, it, uh, finally it renders to native thing. So, for Ember, uh, I didn't know about it. I, I know about Angular. <laughs> Angular. There's nothing on Ember like that? I, I think, I, I heard, Actually, there's, there's I a guy in Kipu Ember that told me something about mobile, I don't know. I think there's something in Ember, no? I mean, Ember Desktop? Yeah. Ember Desktop is for, it's for desktop applications, but it's written it's in Ember. Okay. I've never really found, or actually, I've never really looked for it, um, but there might be something, but not as popular as React Native, and uh, one of my um, points um, in well in the next ten minutes was gonna be I think React if if, if you have to choose one winner I think it's gonna be Re React. Vamos. Um, <laughs> because it's 
one, it's super hyped right now. It reminds me a bit of Rails, maybe 10 years ago or something, well, but also... That's another discussion of hype. hype no, no, no. <laughs> it attracts people. Hype attracts yeah. people. Um, there are a lot of good things about React. Um, and I think the strongest thing is React Native. Um, amazing job by Facebook, what they did. Uh, I've never used it in production. I've dabbled a bit in it in React Native. Uh, but... I don't know. I don't know of any alternative in Ember, really. I, I told you the LinkedIn mobile website was an Ember, but obviously that's not an app. Um, so I don't know. Uh, React Native has a pretty strong advantage there, in my opinion. Okay, so again, we can uh, ensure that it's embed. I mean, it's it's uh, something like Ionic, right? 